Hello everyone, my name is Amy Langless and I want to welcome you all to today's webinar. We'll be introducing the upcoming new 3.0 release of our Virtual Security Cloud Labs. I am also joined by Laura Paglusha. She's our Acquisitions Editor for Computer Science and Cybersecurity, and Ned Hinman. He is our Product Manager for Custom Solutions. Laura and Ned will be jointly presenting our cybersecurity products and demonstrating the new features of our virtual labs. So at this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Laura. Thank you, Amy, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, today's webinar is to offer you an overview of the information system security and assurance offering, including the virtual security cloud labs. We're making some key updates to the labs, which I'm excited to share with you today. As you know, cybersecurity is a top career for the future. The U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics estimated there were 82,000 cybersecurity jobs in 2014, with an 18% increase in growth each year. That's much faster than most careers, and we want to ensure that students are prepared for the workforce. Let's start by looking at our offering. Jones and Bartlett Learning offers a full suite of textbooks, matching courseware, virtual and case study labs, and a rich array of teaching resources. In addition, we offer a mapping and custom curriculum services, as well as dedicated technical support. Specifically, the textbooks are offered in print and digital format. We also offer custom publishing options if you want to create a custom version. We offer matching virtual labs as well as some case study labs. There are course integrations available for Blackboard, Moodle, or Canvas if you're hosting the course at your school, or we offer a hosted version if you need that option. Lastly, there's a large collection of great teaching resources, including a detailed instructor resource guide that offers step-by-step -step instructional cues. There's also a transition guide available anytime we move to a new edition, PowerPoint lectures, assessments, handouts, student study guides, student projects, a suge suggested syllabus, and instructional design documentation, including a content map and time on task allocations. These materials are readily available in 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15 week formats, so you can use the version that best fits your instructional term at your school. The curriculum is mapped to a number of leading certifications shown here. We can provide these mapping guides to you for reference if you so choose. Now let's take a look at the textbooks. There are 15 softbound books also offered in digital format through VitalSource and through JBL's custom published platform. We offer additional digital options as well. Now let's start exploring the labs. There are 15 courses available. Here you can see these courses are broken out by prerequisite courses, foundational courses, technical courses, and elective courses. These courses or labs can be individually adopted or adopted as a full program. The course topics highlighted in blue have a matching set of virtual labs available. The other remaining do not lend themselves to virtual labs. Instead, there are case study labs used in these subject areas. Also, the fundamentals of communication, cyber warfare, and the wireless and mobile device security courses are elective courses that do not have labs. Now I'm going to turn it over to Ned Hinman, our Custom Solutions Manager. Ned will show you the virtual security cloud labs including several exciting updates for version 3.0. Thanks, Laura. Let me just share my screen. All right, so everyone should now be seeing a somewhat familiar uh, desktop environment. This is one of our 3.0 virtual labs. So some of the changes that we're making with this update. First and foremost, we're moving to a new lab provider. The company is called Hatsize. They're based in Canada, and they typically operate in the corporate training market for uh, delivering virtual desktop solutions. You can easily find them online if you'd like to know more about them. And as you can see from my screen, this means the look and feel of the lab environment will be changing, but the course structure will remain the same. The labs are still structured with a landing VM on the right-hand side, where the user will complete the lab exercises, and a lab manual frame on the left, where the user will read through the lab steps. The lab manual frame is a new feature to the HatSize platform, and this particular version is actually unique to Jones and Bartlett Learning. As you can see here, we've replaced the four tabs across the top with a table of contents that users can click on to navigate through the lab manual. The content associated with each section will be uh, displayed in the lower portion of the frame here, where users can scroll, click on screenshots, to expand them, which 
will appear in a light box across the, the lab space, and so on. Users can also collapse this lab frame, and the virtual desktop will resize automatically to fit the new screen size. And if you prefer, you can actually dynamically resize the lab frame to make it larger, to make it smaller, as well as moving the content frame and navigation area up and down like so. While we're looking at the lab frame, I'd like to call your attention to this section over here, Section 2, Applied Learning. This is an entirely new content section that we've developed based on some of the more pressing feedback that we've received in the past few years, namely that the labs are just too easy. This criticism posed a bit of a challenge for us because what some users consider too easy, others might consider just right. The lab steps have always been highly prescriptive by design, as many of our users are new to the field of IT security and benefit from exercises that don't assume any past experience. That said, we didn't want to rock the boat for those of you who have already woven these labs into your course, so we knew learning objectives, changing them or changing large chunks of the content wasn't going to be an option. So with that in mind, I think we found a good middle path. Section 2, Applied Learning, which is brand new, takes the same exercises as Section 1, Hands-On Demonstration, and reintroduces them with less of the proverbial hand-holding. In this case, students are still going to work through the exercises, cross-site scripting attacks, but in this section, the lab steps will be less prescriptive. So instead of on the desktop, double-click on a particular icon, it's just launch this tool. Section 2 will also include a new task towards the end that wasn't included in Section 1. So this section is really designed to be uh, additional practice for students that have already completed Section 1 or as the lab assignment itself rather than Section 1. The deliverables for Section 2 are distinct from Section 1, so as an instructor you can assign Section 2 without worrying that students will complete Section 1 instead. Certainly, we can't stop them from using Section 1 as a reference or aid, but they will need to follow the steps given in Section 2. We've also revamped the existing challenge section and uh, introduced a greater sense of continuity between all three sections. As I mentioned earlier, Section 2 includes something new that wasn't included in Section 1 to give it that added value and set it apart. And in most cases, that something new will serve as an introduction to exercises covered in Section 3. For example, Section 3 will now follow a standardized format covering three areas in the lab, analysis and discussion, tools and commands, and a challenge exercise. More often than not, that challenge exercise will include the something new that came up in Section 2, typically a new tool or some alternative take on an earlier task using command line. As an instructor, you're welcome to decide which portions of the lab manual to assign and which ones to skip, but if you choose to assign the whole thing, there will be bridges between the sections. So that's the new content, which we're very happy about, but it's not the only major update that has its roots in some of the persistent feedback we've received about the labs over the years. Some of you may have noticed that uh, each lab exercise has a checkbox next to it. On its own, this is just a nice new feature that we're referring to as progress tracking, and it allows students to mark off tasks as they complete them to keep track of where they are in the lab manual. But it's actually something that supports a more exciting new feature, and that is persistence, or more commonly, the ability for students to save their work. The official hat size term is state saves, and it's something that students will be prompted with when they disconnect from the lab session after spending time in the lab, they'll be prompted to uh, fill out a name for their state save and then save it. The hat size system will then take a snapshot of the differences between the student's lab and the original base lab. When the student launches the lab the next day or the day after, any files they saved will still be open. I should add that since the labs do use real software, it will behave just like a, a real computer that you've shut down. So if the student is in the middle of a scan and then closes the lab then and saves it, it won't reload to the exact place in the middle of that scan that they were running. However, any lab, any files that they might have saved to the desktop or anywhere else in the lab will still be there. And so to ensure that students know exactly what they're doing um, and where they were when they do make a save, we've included these, these check boxes over here. So that's state saves. Oh, I should also add that students will have one state save per lab and each state save will be valid for 30 days. 
Now, the last major update is the one that you would probably expect, and that's the software. The operating system on all landing VMs will be Windows Server 2016, and all of the software tools will be updated to the most current versions uh, where our development team deems appropriate. Again, we're not interested in pulling the rug out from anyone here, so for the most part we won't be changing the specific tools in the existing lab, just updating to the most current versions. Where you will see new tools will be uh, sections two or three. So far, the only tool that we have changed in section one of any lab is the Open Boss Vulnerability Scanner in the Fundamentals of Information System Security Labs. And that's actually because Open Boss was reluctantly introduced as a replacement for another tool in our 2.0 update due to licensing issues. The original tool was Nessus, and I know a lot of users were disappointed to see that go, but it turns out that Tenable has changed their licensing terms since 2014, so we're pleased to reintroduce that in 3.0. So those are the new features that I wanted to highlight today. Before we open up the floor to questions, I just wanted to preempt a few and mention some other points around fulfillment. First, the new labs will be available for demo access on a rolling basis. The first set, Fundamentals of Information System Security, is currently available. To request demo access, you'll just want to talk to your account representative, and they'll provide you with a set of demo credentials on the hat size portal. Although you'll be demoing the labs through the hat size portal, the labs will ultimately be delivered to students through Moodle courses on the Jones and Bartlett Learning Navigate 2 platform, with the exception, of course, of anyone that has an institutional pay agreement or an integration or a custom solution. We're still working on connecting the new labs to Navigate 2, but I anticipate we'll be able to start fulfilling courses and instructor credentials in June or July. Your account representative will be the best resource for you uh, in keeping you up to date on these changes and ensuring you have everything you need to teach from the new labs in fall 2017. Which brings us to questions. If there's something you'd like to ask, just add it to the chat window on the right and we'll start working through that list. Okay, we have our first question. Are changes in pricing expected? So, as far as pricing is concerned, the net cost to the bookstore will remain the same. That is currently at $100 for standalone lab access, $128 for lab access bundled with an ebook, and $145 for a print bundle. What we'll be changing is the list cost when students purchase directly from Jones and Bartlett Learning. Currently, that is set at a 17% markup as those materials are currently fulfilled through a third party site that fulfills specialized access codes for us. But since we're moving it to the main Jones and Bartlett storefront, where Typically, the markup is 33%. We've set a middle ground, and that will be adjusted to a 25% markup. But again, the cost of the bookstore will remain the same as it has been for the past few years. Thanks, Ben. Any other questions? So the next comment, you like many of the changes, will we still be able to create a custom lab course? Uh, yes. Because you don't currently use the JBL text. Yep, we can still create custom lab courses. If you already have one, we'll be replicating that with the new labs. If you'd like to set one up, reach out to your account representative. So not a question, but just a comment that these are welcome changes and it looks good. So that's awesome to hear. Thank you very much. Here's another question. Is there any time to elaborate on having a custom lab course built within Canvas? Sure. So depending on how you want to go about a payment model, we can do it a few ways. If you wanted to set up an institutional pay agreement, we could drop direct links to each preferred lab into Canvas. Or if you want to do a student pay version, the Canvas integrations moving forward will, we would provide a cartridge with all the appropriate assessments for the labs you've selected, and then an LTI link to navigate to where we'll collect all of the lab links that you'd like to use in a sort of lab portal. So everything will report to your gradebook. All those uh, assessment materials would be hosted locally in Canvas. The labs would just be launched from Navigate 2. And this is just to ensure uh, we're consistently using the same types of access codes and able to use the Jones and Bartlett Learning storefront rather than relying on third-party sites like ShopJB Learning, which some of you may have encountered in the past. And if you have, then you've almost certainly encountered a back order issue because when we work with third-party vendors, uh, they don't like to stock as many codes as we would have liked. And that's it's certainly something we can discuss at greater length with myself and your account representative. Have student worksheets been updated? 
Yes. So in the past, we've had assessment worksheets that would be assigned in tandem with the labs. I'm not sure if the person that asked the question is also using these, but we also have assessment quizzes, sort of an alternative format to that assessment worksheet, since those can be integrated with an LMS and provides auto grading there. So both of those will be updated to account for any changes in the lab steps. Both of those assessments will be tied uh, to Section 1. So if you choose not to assign Section 2, those assessments will still fit with, the, with Section 1. And of course, the fact that Section 2 has the same content as Section 1 with fewer steps, you can also assign those worksheets or quizzes in tandem with Section 2. It just won't include any questions about, say, the new task that was included as a bridge to Section 3. Since the changes to the lab steps are largely minor, they generally stem from same changes to the software if, you know, an um, interface is changed. So with that in mind, it's the same exercises, the, the worksheets and the quizzes won't be changing too dramatically, but we will be providing new versions. I'd like to add as well that we will be offering transition guides for each of the labs you'll be able to easily see what software has been updated, what new tasks have been introduced, and we'll provide that to you over the next several months so that we can help you prepare for your fall course. Anything else on anyone's mind? If not, please, as we have mentioned before, contact your account manager for any additional questions, and you can also obtain demo access. The link is on our website. We also have a dedicated website to our series www.isaseries.com. So either the Jones and Bartlett Learning site or the specific ISA series site will direct you to your specific account representative. And we have one late breaking question. Instructor resources, will the projects be updated within those? Uh, the projects will not be updated. The projects, any updates we would make to those would be made with the textbook revision cycle rather than the labs. The labs we are updating uh, independently of the textbook. But since none of the labs themselves and so far as, you know, the, the titles or learning objectives are changing, none of the instructor resources will be changing either. If you're using any of our new editions, for example, Fundamentals of Information System Security, published in the third edition of October, the instructor resources and the projects were updated at that time. System Forensics Investigation and Response will be coming out with a new third edition in September, and you'll find the instructor resources and the projects will be updated with that. So as Ned mentioned, the instructor resources and projects are very closely aligned with the textbooks and update at the same time the textbooks go into a new edition. Okay. So thank you everyone for your time, for calling in. We hope you're as excited as we are about these products. And please reach out if you have any questions or if you'd like to talk about it further. Thank you very much.